Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I've recently done a couple of videos talking about the baits that I like to use in certain situations. And I gotta tell you, I've got great feedback on those videos and I continue to get a lot of viewers asking me for specific baits I like to use in new situations. And one of those that I thought was a good topic that I don't know that I've ever discussed in the almost thousand videos I've done is baits to use around bridges. Now, bridges are one of my favorite things to fish. Uh, no matter where you go in the country, if you have a bridge, you will find fish there. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first being that the bridge is going to be over what was the original uh, river channel or creek channel, and therefore you're gonna have some deep water. But not only are you gonna have some of the deepest water because it's the creek channel, Generally what happens is that bridge area gets washed out even more and becomes even deeper because now there's a pinch point once they created that bridge. Uh, so when you do get a little bit of current flow through those areas, it digs out that hole. Well, what that hole does is it brings a lot of bait fish to that area because it truly is the deepest water around. So whether you're talking about a bridge in the back of a creek or a bridge that might be out on the main river channel, generally speaking, you have a lot of bait fish that are in those areas. And because you have bait fish, you've got a lot of game fish, and that includes all of your bass species. It does not matter if you're talking largemouth, spotted bass, or smallmouth, they all use bridges. And it gives you an opportunity, at not only finding a place that's very easy to locate that the fish are continuously using, it's generally speaking a travel area or a highway for the fish as well. So it's a spot you can sit and fish for the majority of the day and catch fish throughout the day. Now, having said that, there are generally key spots amongst those bridges. So, you know, right off the top of the head, you know, you're talking about your corners of the bridge of the actual uh, causeway or riprap that forms the two ends of the bridge. You've got your your uh, actual beams that potentially go down into the water. Uh, those are gonna be your easy ones, but there's usually going to be a few other key areas that have to do with sunken debris. Maybe there's a big boulder that got pushed in. Maybe there's just a big piece of uh, old roadway that's fallen in, a big concrete block. Sometimes there's old bridges that have new bridges built on top of them. So a lot of times there are other sweet spots. Uh, but one of the keys to locating where the fish are going to be is to identify where there's potential current or where the bait fish are setting up, which generally is based on what the current flow is. And a lot of times, guys, I want to point this out too, you can have current flowing back into a creek or up the lake as well, especially if you have wind blowing into those directions. So if you're on a lake that does fluctuate in water depth, or you're on a lake that, uh, does not maybe have a lot of natural current flow, but does get a lot of wind pushing, you can have current going both ways under a bridge. And therefore the fish will set up differently based on what that current direction is. So that's something you wanna pay attention to. You know, if a lake is being drawn down or they're pulling water, current will be coming from the back of the creek to towards the main lake or downstream. But if you're backfilling a lake, meaning they're holding water at the dam and the lake's rising, you'll have a, a back current as well, where the current is actually moving up lake. So it's something that you really want to watch for. And it's something that if you pay attention closely to, you can predict where those fish are going to be. Meaning if you keep good logs and you, you your memory is good and you know that when the lake was at a certain depth and they were backfilling it, there was a certain sweet spot on that bridge, it's probably going to hold up that that's where the same conditions, the fish are gonna be in the same spot. So it's worth paying attention to. Now, having said that, one of the keys to fishing a bridge is to recognize that most of the time, the fish are gonna be keen in on bait fish. They are very much bait fish magnets, okay? You do have, generally speaking, a lot of riprap, and therefore you can say there's a lot of crayfish in those areas, and there probably are. But generally speaking, I like to fish primarily bait fish imitating baits. So that's what we're gonna have for you here today. I wanna to point out that if any of these baits are something that you think you might be able to use on your local lakes and you're looking to purchase them, please use the Tackle Warehouse affiliate link that I'll put in the video description. 
Uh, every little bit that comes back from your purchase comes right back to creating content for you. Uh, and I'll put links for each of these up in the video description. So the first one that I wanna point out that's potentially my favorite is just a small finesse swim bait. This is the Dirty Jigs Matt Stefan Guppy Head paired up with a 3.3 Kitek Fat Impact Swim Bait. Uh, in this situation, I love going with the Kitek because a lot of times you're going to be fishing this very slowly through these areas and the Kitek is such a soft plastic that it gets a lot of really good tail movement. Uh, and I like to fish it on the smallest head size possible. So if I can get away with an eighth ounce head and really let this bait just pendulum past some of those pillars, or down some of those steep riprap banks, that's gonna be a great way to generate bites. And you, one of the keys to this is recognizing that the fish a lot of times aren't very spread out around these bridges. They're generally going to be tight to some of the cover because they're using the bridge pilings or the riprap bank to chase the bait fish into and use those areas as ambush locations. So even though there are some fish suspended out and around, most of your fish are gonna be caught around some of the ambush locations, which means keeping a slow moving swim bait or a bait that can stay right along those ambush locations, those are gonna generate more strikes for you versus baits that really come ripping through those areas quick. Uh, you just wanna keep your bait in the strike zone longer. And a, a tight lined light swim bait is a great way to do that. <clears throat> now along the same lines there, is to fish a jerkbait. This is the Berkeley Stunna, a great jerkbait for fishing around bridge pilings because it does slowly sink. And one thing about bridge pilings is a lot of times they're gonna be, they're gonna be in the deepest water because they're in the river channel itself. So depending on how deep some of those areas are, you may be fishing fish that are down 30 feet deep. And you know, a jerkbait is a great way of getting those fish to come up and bite your bait. But a jerk bait that you can get down 10, 12, 15 feet versus one that only dives to six and then suspends, uh, you, you get more bites the deeper you can get your jerk bait if the fish are, are suspended deeper. In some instances on bridges, and this is very often, the fish are only down a few feet under the surface. They may be in 50 feet of water, but they're only in the top 10 feet. So at that point, any jerk bait would work. But if you're talking about getting your bait down to fish that are in 15 or 17 feet of water, having a jerk bait that either dives really deep or slowly sinks like the Stunna is a great way to do it. But again, the key with a jerk bait is you can keep it in the strike zone. You work it down and you can let it suspend or slowly float or slowly sink right next to those pillars. And it's a great way to generate strikes. It's probably one of the best baits it mimicking dying bait fish. And that's one of the things that happens around bridges all the time because you have thousands of shad and bait fish that are schooled up in those areas. So the bass are looking for some of the dying ones to create an easy meal. <clears throat> all right, so the next one that I love is just the hover rig. This is my designed hook. I like to throw it on the four and a quarter inch Berkeley Maxent flatworm. This is the 364 ounce size, so it's extremely slow sinking, has a good side to side motion, spiraling motion. I throw it right up against the pillars and I just let it slowly fall along it. And it's a bait because it's falling so slow, stays right in that strike zone for a longer period of time. You could try, there are times we're going with a very heavy weight can be good. It, it really generating those strikes is that bait's falling super fast. But generally speaking for me, if I'm fishing bridge pilings, I want a slow falling plastic bait that will generate a lot of strikes from those fish that don't want to chase some of my bait fish imitating baits. And a four and a quarter inch flat worm with the hover rig is a great way to generate those strikes. Another one that I like to go with, again, going back to the bait fish, is a spin bait. This is the Duo Realis Spin Bait 90. I really like this one. This is one of my favorite colors. This is the, I've got to get it right, Komochi Shad. Uh, it's got a, like a blueback herring kind of look to it. And because of that, it's, it's just one that I've had a lot of luck on over the years. But one of the keys with a spin bait is you can get it down to a decent depth. You can slow retrieve it and it just stays in those areas. And it's one of the best baits 
it mimicking bait fish again. For fish that are keyed in solely on bait fish, a spin bait is a great way to fish them. Uh, and the Duo Realis one is a great one. Uh, the Berkeley Spy is another good one. Basically what you're looking for is, is a color that matches the hatch and a bait that has a very good uh, wobble when you're not retrieving it. So one of the keys to this bait or the Berkeley Spy is you can tight line it and it actually shimmies as it goes down. And that's a good way to generate strikes on the bridge, uh, bridge pilings. The last one is one that a lot of people don't choose to fish, but this is one I can assure you when the fish are sitting up higher in the water column, it can generate some of the biggest strikes from the fish that are on the bridge. So if you see the bass are busting or you see that the bait fish on your depth finder are only a few feet under, under the surface, don't be afraid to go with a top water. This is the Jay Walker 100 by Berkeley. This is one of my favorite colors. I think it's, uh, I believe it's called Citrus Shad. Uh, just a great color for generating strikes from fish that are suspended and keyed in on bait fish. But a lot of times people don't ever think about throwing top water around bridge pilings because they're in such deep water, meaning the boat might be in 50 feet, 100 feet of water. But it's important to recognize that a lot of times the bass are only a few feet under the surface. They may be suspended down three feet over a hundred feet of water. And when that's the case, there's very few uh, techniques other than top water that can generate some of those strikes. And for some reason, the bigger fish generally tend to like the top water versus say some of the other more finessey presentations. Not saying you won't catch big ones on that, you will. But there are times where you'll catch five to one fish on those finesse presentations, but the one that you catch on the top water will be one of the bigger fish for the day. So it's a bait that I love to have handy anytime I'm fishing around bridges. Uh, it's a bait that a lot of times other people don't fish it. They may fish it on the riprap banks around the bridge, but they're not fishing it out in the center around some of the bridge pilings. And I think they're making a mistake. And I'll tell you, the Jaywalker is a great bait for that. It's got a different rattle. You can hear that. I don't know what it is, it's like that low thud. You can hear it really good vibrating and like echoing off the bridge pilings. There's something different about that sound around those cement concrete bridge pilings that just seems to generate a lot more strikes than some of the other top water walking baits that I like to throw in other areas. But if I'm fishing bridge pilings, I love that Jaywalker in that color. That's a very key bait for me. So anytime you see a bridge, guys, that's a high percentage area. Does not really matter what time of year. They're good year round, spring, fall, summer, winter. You can fish them all the time. And even though a lot of other boats will fish them because they're obvious locations, they're such good highway locations and there's generally enough bait there that you consistently have fish coming to those areas. So if you're looking for an area to generate some strikes, that's probably one of the best areas around to key in on some fish. So give them a try if you have not been trying them. They can be intimidating the fish because of how deep the water is at times. But if you give these baits a try, I assure you, you will catch some fish around the bridge pilings. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, we'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.